Did you see that? A work session is on dark skies. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Thank you for being here. I'm Ian Sisson. I'm a planner in the community development department. I've worked uh, in the department since May of last year, so I'm relatively new. Um, I'm here to talk with you tonight about um, what we're calling dark skies. And it would be a dark skies ordinance, which we're seeing around the state and around the country, essentially the way they function is by regulating outdoor lighting. So I'm just going to introduce the topic with a brief presentation today and talk a little bit about the history of dark sky ordinances, uh, and lighting regulations in Clatsop County, and um, I have a little bit of information about what the, the five cities are doing. So I'd just like to introduce the topic and um, allow you to discuss and ask questions following the presentation. May I ask a question before we start? Mr. Sisson, you said, you, is it Mr. Sisson? Yes. You work for the county right now? I do, in the community okay. development department. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the main question today is, should Clatsop County update its outdoor lighting regulations? And for some background, um, development of the land with new structures and amenities is commonly accompanied by exterior lighting. Exterior lighting can have functions from security and improved visibility at night to ornamentation of structures and landscapes. Mr. Sisson, can I interrupt you? Sure. I used to work in a prison as a psychological counselor. So that business about security, people think that they are more secure if they have the outside lit up all the time. What people who committed burglaries said to me was, you know, that just makes my job easier because it's all lit up all the time. So if people want additional security, light sensors work much better because they indicate that someone is there when there hadn't been before. I just want to say that about security. It's a good point to bring up and something we can discuss. And um, it is something that I've found in research. I don't have hard evidence to support this, but in research, there's a suggestion that um, outdoor lighting can give the perception of safety to the person installing the fixture. Um, but in reality, it can reduce the ability to see at night because of the contrast between light areas and dark areas. So you can't see into dark areas as well when you're standing in an area that's illuminated. And a person who is intent on burglarizing a home finds that job easier if the place is lit up. And that's simply anecdotal evidence, but I heard it, I heard it from people in the, in the business, so to speak. Thank you. So dark sky ordinances are implemented in order to curb light pollution. So I'd like to define what we're calling light pollution. Um, it's essentially the inappropriate or excessive use of artificial light. And the next logical question is what is inappropriate or excessive? So the International Dark Sky Association and the Illumination Engineering Society have kind of tried to refine a list of terminology and um, define those terms. So a short list um, I'll give to you today includes glare. So glare is the excessive brightness, poor direction, or improper shielding of light sources causing visual discomfort. Clutter is excessive grouping of light sources that can cause confusion, distraction, or disorientation. Light trespass is light falling where it is not intended or desired, such as into a neighbor's window. This is kind of the most common thing that comes up when people talk about the topic. And sky glow, uh, brightening of the night sky caused by light sources that are directed or reflected upward. Uh, the two photos you see there were taken from the same location. Uh, one was during a power outage, and one was on a normal night. 
energy waste. Uh, this diagram I won't jump into the details of, but it was put together by the U.S. Department of Energy and describes some of the um, energy costs associated with outdoor lighting, specifically the costs associated with wasted light, so light that is not going where it's intended or needed to go. And then ecological disruption. So we've all probably heard the example of the sea turtles in Florida and in other places in the world who um, need to see the moon to get back out to the water after they hatch and go the wrong way toward the city lights. Um, we don't have that problem in Clatsop County. And I don't have research showing what species might be affected by light pollution, specifically here in Clatsop County. But generally speaking, ecological disruption is another um, category that dark sky ordinances are meant to address. Well, I've heard some people concerned about the lighting of the column and, and affecting birds. So Migratory I, I birds, apparently, um, mm -hmm. especially those that fly at night and use the moon uh, to navigate, could be affected. I, again, don't have the research yeah, to support either. it, though. So this diagram is from a study um, that was examining the change in brightness of the night sky over time due to artificial lighting. And the last image in the bottom right is a projection, obviously, um, because the year there is 2025. But you can uh, assume that we're somewhere in between the bottom two. Um, and comparing that with the first image in the upper right, or sorry, in the upper left, it's pretty clear that um, the uh, outdoor lighting is having a major effect. <coughs> so the next question is, what has been done to curb light pollution in Clatsop County? Um, our land and water development and use ordinance, the, the zoning ordinance, regulates outdoor lighting in various sections. Uh, they're dispersed throughout the zoning designations. Um, residential, commercial, and industrial zones uh, include some development standards that generally require lighting to be directed away from adjacent properties, and in some cases, we require full cutoff fixtures. And the diagram here shows what is meant by a full cutoff fixture. Basically, it means the light bulb itself is concealed inside of the armature of the light fixture and that no light is allowed to be cast above the horizontal plane. Um, and in fact, within that last 10 degrees leading up to the horizontal plane, um, it should be limited. So the lighting standards we have in the zoning ordinance, again, are just kind of scattered throughout, and they're not necessarily consistent with each other. Um, exterior lighting is also regulated in our standards document, and there we have standards for lighting of parking lots, signs, beachfront motels, and communication towers. Uh, and then each of the five incorporated areas in Clatsop County also have their own outdoor lighting regulations to various extents, uh, with Cannon Beach probably being the most um, robust. Uh, they have quite an extensive outdoor lighting regulation uh, that includes uh, like lumen limits for a given site and requires review of a lighting plan and it, and it gets pretty technical with regulating outdoor lighting. So still asking this question of what has been done to curb light pollution in Clatsop County. Um, in 2005, the County Board of Commissioners held a work session to discuss the topic of regulating outdoor lighting. Uh, and it was prompted by, or promoted by, a request from Tim Crawford, uh, who operates the Arch Cape Observatory. And uh, the board referred the request to the Planning Commission. Meanwhile, directed the community development staff to provide more information to builders and developers and property owners as they came into our office to apply for development and building permits, basically encouraging 
best practices and uh, encourage, encouraging people to be good neighbors. So we handed out this um, sheet here, which I believe should be in your packets. Um, but it promoted awareness of the issues that could be caused by outdoor lighting and encouraging voluntary use of light fixtures that conserve energy, direct light only where it's needed, and minimize light trespass onto adjacent properties and rights of way. Then the Planning Commission held two work sessions on, on the topic of regulating outdoor lighting. And uh, at the first session, staff had presented pretty extensive draft code language um, to which the, the Planning Commission responded basically that they thought it would be very difficult to enforce. Uh, at the second session, the standards were greatly reduced and applied only to oceanfront properties, with the primary mechanism being uh, a curfew on outdoor lighting directed toward the beach from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And ultimately, the consensus that was reached by the Planning Commission was that lighting regulations would be difficult or impossible to enforce, and that encouraging awareness and voluntary compliance was the best course. So no new lighting standards were ultimately adopted in 2005, which to our knowledge is the last time either body has considered outdoor lighting regulations or increased outdoor lighting regulations. So that request came in July of 2018 uh, in discussion of farm and forest zone code amendments. Um, this board had expressed a desire uh, to revisit the topic. So that is why we're here having this work session today. And I think the questions that would be beneficial for staff to have you answer are, are here on the screen. So I'll read through them now and then allow you to ask some questions and then have some discussion about it. So the first question is, is light pollution perceived to be a current issue in the rural areas of Clatsop County? The second question is, is light pollution expected to be an issue in the future? The third question, should there be countywide design standards for exterior lighting? And the final question is, should resources be directed toward raising public awareness and encouraging best practices? So those last two questions are sort of an either or. If you, if you think um, countywide design standards are necessary and or appropriate, then let's explore that. Uh, if you do not, then should resources be directed toward raising public awareness instead? Uh, and if, if that's a no, then we would essentially take no action. Are there any questions? Questions? Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for this presentation. Uh, I'm grateful to have this issue raised. Uh, Mr. Crawford is uh, a wonderful neighbor to have. His level of concern for community well-being is admirable. Uh, I think if we asked him, he would say it was an issue before. It's even more of an issue now. Um, he lives around the headland from me in Arch Cape. I'm in uh, Falcon Cove Beach, and I'll tell you, from in my way of thinking, it's an issue in the rural areas because um, even though people may be encouraged to do the right thing so that they don't light trespass, it happens frequently. And um, anything that we can do to help people be good neighbors. I mean, I think some of it's inadvertent. Uh, this may be hard to believe, but sometimes neighbors um, want to irritate each other. Can you imagine such a thing would happen? Nah, never. But, but um, the more densely populated we are and the more frequently we're populated with visitors or customers or whatever you want to call the people who are doing transient occupancy, the more of an issue light pollution becomes because um, more people are turning on lights and leaving on lights and are used to urban circumstances where there is light pollution all the time at night and they feel more comfortable because I've approached neighbors on this and said, gee, could you put in a light fixture that 
either turns off automatically so that the light is only on when it's needed and it doesn't waste energy and it doesn't do light trespass or could you shield it so it goes down and the response was well first of all there's no law and secondly tourists are more comfortable if it looks more like an urban environment so um, good neighboring goes so far but in my mind not far enough and I don't know what my colleagues have to say about it well in light of time constraints, do we have questions for uh, Mr. Sisson? Uh, let's direct questions first and then we can have a discussion. It, it seems to me um, that if one of, one of your comments early was um, about enforcement, so there, there may be a question of, of staff or how we enforce it. Um, and then I guess the other possible question is, um, I'm all for education, and what would the cost be in trying to educate the public? Um, so those are the two things that I can think of for for costs. Can you think? Do you have an other issues about costs that we should consider ourselves consider? Um, not that I can think of. And and when I saw this on the on on our agenda, I was kind of surprised because I've been reading about this for a long time. I thought that, um, so we're a little bit behind the eight ball on this, aren't we? Um, I'm glad we're doing it, but I'm all for anything we can do to reduce light pollution, so. I am as well. Uh, Gerhardt, where I live, uh, initiated a lighting ordinance a while back, but I've lived here for decades and I've lost my night sky. Uh, so I, and I also have light coming into my bedroom now because that was before the ordinance was in place. So, so I think, it, it, sorry, if I may, um, I think that you guys have answered the first of Ian's two questions. And so mm -hmm. essentially, um, to direct staff as to whether or not there should be a countywide design standard for exterior lighting, mm -hmm. um, if you wanted them to explore that as an option, um, while, you know, we can continue to do the good neighbor outdoor public awareness raising, it, it kind of sounds like you guys are going in the direction of setting a design standard. Well, it sounds like three of us are in favor of the design standards. Commissioner Quayla, how do you feel about this? It's just never been an issue that is one of my constituents has never raised. Okay. Yeah. So okay. not familiar with it. Well, I believe we can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and work on design standards. Design standards. Mm -hmm. okay. if, if I could, Madam Chair. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else remembers the meeting where we attempted to um, talk about um, uh, floodplain issues and tsunami inundation zones and putting that in. And um, I've never seen this room quite that full of frightened, angry people who did not want us to impose anything on them that they thought would harm their well-being and their finances. So I'm in favor of looking at standards. But that education piece that you referred to, uh, Chair Neberger, I think is an important piece of it because we're not trying to be the light police. On the other hand, if there's a way to support good neighboring, I mean, I'm thinking this thing, um, if we have an electronic form, I can submit it to the editor of the Arch Cape Falcon Cove Beach Community Club newsletter and that's a way to refresh people's awareness of it because I think maybe people have forgotten about it or assume that it's already happening. Um, so however we can help you with low cost or free ways, I'm happy to do that. Or if you have um, posters or you know anything we can do to help uh, increase community awareness, I'm happy to do that. Okay, thank you. So what I'm hearing is basically a yes to all of the above, all of those questions. I, I would, for myself, uh, it depends on the amount of resources that need to be directed towards raising public awareness. I think when ordinances are passed to, uh, for land use or zoning or whatever, they just go in. Um, and people, I mean, it may seem harsh, but people know when they come for permits, they know that's part of what they have to do. So 
For me, it would depend on how much in the way of resources have to be directed towards public awareness. I, for myself, I, I would say yes on all of these things. Um, I've lived in a major city. I've, I've been out in the, where you can see every star. And so um, anything we could do to protect our quality of life, I'm, I'm for. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.